Hey everyone, this is Tara, the Painted Cicada. Welcome. Today we are creating Gilded Roses. Here is my sample. Um, this is a really easy uh, and fun way to make something absolutely beautiful. I will walk you through everything step by step. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do before we hop in there is go over our supply list. So uh, when you enrolled in the class, you should have gotten this supply list here. Um, but I want you to know, as with most of my classes, um, you can substitute quite a bit and still end up with a really beautiful result. So first, let's go over um, the substrate that we're using. So I recommended 9 by 12 watercolor paper. Canson XL is one of my favorites. Um, it's inexpensive. It still behaves like um, a fine watercolor paper. Um, it's really good to experiment with. It's cost effective. Um, and you'll still get really nice results with it. So that's what I use. As far as paint goes, tonight I'm going to be using um, Dr. P.H. Martin's liquid watercolor. Now these are fairly pricey. So don't be discouraged by that if you don't have them. You can use pan watercolor, you can use tube watercolor, um, you can use whatever you have. Um, the colors that you're gonna need, um, the most important colors to have are a magenta, a true purple, and a blue. And from that, you can mix these two colors. I already have them pre-mixed. Um, but you want a red violet and you want a blue violet. So if you only have magenta, violet, and blue, you can mix uh, in between each colors. Um, so don't worry too much about having every single color. And then uh, what I have here is a green, which we're going to use for some of the stems and leaves. And then I have a um, this color is called tapestry. It's kind of a uh, brownish yellow. And if you have a nice bright yellow, you can always add to just a pinch of purple. And that will change the tone just a bit. So uh, the colors that you're going to need are magenta, violet, blue, uh, yellow, and a green. organized sometimes I get confused okay um, then I recommended an acrylic paint so um, I have golden uh, iridescent gold deep this is my absolute favorite gold um, in the whole wide world but any gold acrylic will be fine and what we're gonna do is put that um, in an applicator bottle that was one of your supplies as well now if you don't have this and you're not able to get this for the class, there are a few other things that you can substitute. Um, it'll give you a little bit different effect, but um, you can still have fun with it. So, uh, let's see. A metallic Sharpie is something you could use as well. Um, if you have a gold uh, gel pen, that could work similarly. Or if you have an ultra fine paintbrush and some gold paint, you can use that. So um, we're going to use this to do some lining and um, any tool that you have that's got gold that can make thin lines will accomplish that. Um, and then I also recommended um, a gold metallic ink of some sort. So I've got this Liquitex acrylic ink. Um, it's really fluid. Basically, it's acrylic paint um, that's a lot thinner. Uh, if you've got gold watercolor, that's fine as well. Um, but we just want a nice gold um, inky solution to use. Um, also, even if you have... Um, like an actual ink, like I've got this one's are going ink, this would work as well. Um, you can use, you know, a lot of, you can substitute um, 
a lot of different things. So uh, don't worry too much about having exact exact. Um, I already mentioned the fine line applicator bottle. Um, we're working with paint, so you're going to need water, you're going to need paper towels, um, something to put your paint on, um, and then paint brushes in various sizes. I recommend small, medium, and large rounds when I'm working in watercolor. That's almost all I ever use. Um, if you want to speed along the process, you can use a hair dryer or a heat gun. Um, I have one here, but that's totally optional. Um, and then, so this is my original here. And what I did was I scanned it um, and created this tracer for you. And so I'm gonna work from the tracer. Um, but if you want to transfer, you're gonna need carbon paper, which is what I have here. If you don't have carbon paper, there are a few things that you can do. Um, so the easiest, uh, and the one that I would recommend is just flipping over your paper, grabbing a pencil. And if you scribble all over the back of this tracer and you fill up the whole background here, what you can do is flip it over and then trace your design and it will transfer for you. Um, I've got the carbon paper, so that is what I'm gonna use. And that's gonna be our first step. Uh, normally with watercolor, I would not, um, recommend using carbon paper. Carbon paper is the easiest transfer option, um, but the uh, image is gonna transfer very dark. And normally we don't wanna see that. Since we're using gold uh, to cover up a lot of our outlines, I am fine with that today. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this transfer and we're just gonna transfer this design together. Um, now, anytime I tell people to uh, transfer a design. I always say transfer the minimum amount of lines that you need. So um, for example, over here where all these little details are, I don't need to do every little speck in the center of that flower. I'm just doing you know, the basic outlines of these shapes. And don't worry about being too perfect either because this is just a rose that I drew. So, um, you know, roses in nature, each and every one is different. And each and every angle, when you look at it, makes it a little bit different. So if your petals aren't exactly the same, don't stress about it. I already did the hard work for you. And pretty much any, you know, wavy, petally type lines is going to give the impression of a rose. So really do not stress about the shape of the flower. It's actually kind of fun when you do your own little variations. And then when you look at it, you know that it's yours. And so see how that's nice and dark and bright. Normally I wouldn't um, encourage that on uh, a watercolor option just because watercolor is so transparent. But since we are using the gold over the top, the outlines will be able to hide that. For those of you who are joining me live, feel free to say hi on the comments or ask any questions. Um, I know a lot of my supporters, hello supporters, um, will jump on for replays instead of 
joining live and that's fine. You really start to notice just how many petals there are in roses when you have to redraw them. So many. A lot of uh, the people that make art with me um, really prefer to have these tracers. So I do like to show and teach with the tracer design. Um, but once you, you know, make one of these, if you enjoy painting and you want to do your own thing, you can certainly make um, any flower and do the same technique. And then you'll come up with a really beautiful piece of art. So. Um, sometimes it's nice to learn with the tracer, even if you are good at drawing. Um, there are times, you know, I can draw with it. You know, I created the tracer for you so I can draw this design, but sometimes it's nice when you're learning just to get that part out of the way, focus on the technique, and then once you get the technique down, um, you can just repeat it with your own art. So that's why I provide this tracer. And sometimes I do like to do the transfers um, online live because um, that way people know how to do it. I've had a few people ask. Sorry, that was my dog saying hello. My son just got home and he gets really excited. I have my whole tracer transferred. So when you get finished, it should look something like this. So basically we've created kind of a cheat to get that, that image onto your watercolor paper. Um, and then the next couple of steps really are just filling in these colors um, in a really fun way. So um, what I did when I created this is really just alternate the colors on the petals. And so um, the first thing I'm gonna do is start um, with my, I'm gonna get my three main colors. So I'm gonna get, uh, my magenta, my purple, and my blue. And I'm just going to get some of that uh, watercolor ready to go. And regardless of the type of watercolor that I use, I like to have it all set up on my palette. So I'm going to put some pure blue. do pure purple right there and then the magenta over here okay. 
And then create your in-between colors. So I'm gonna want to mix a little bit of um, magenta and purple. And then you're gonna come out with this uh, color right here. And then you'll mix your purple and your blue and come up with that in-between color, which I've got right here. And you can always adjust your colors however you want, but basically we want um, just a variety of tones. Um, now, what we're going to do is I'm going to get um, just a medium-sized round. I uh, use Royal Line Equal Aqualon. Um, I really like these for watercolor. Um, this is a size six, but um, sizes vary between brands, so don't worry too much about that. Just use what makes sense for you. Um, the first color that I'm going to start using is this um, um, red violet. So it's got a little bit of that um, magenta in it, a little bit of that purple. Um, and just to show you, I'll give you my little swatch over here. Um, that's my color. But something similar is fine. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is start painting uh, with water. So I've got this big petal here. We're going to do a technique that's called wet on wet. And so inside this petal, I am just going to color inside the lines. So just a nice thin coat of water, just like we're painting with paint, but just do it with water. Nice thin coat here. Um, and then I'm going to tap into the color I want to use. I'm going to put it up on the, the closest part of this petal and I'm going to encourage it to move out and you'll see we're doing wet on wet so this is going to blend out on its own and I'm going to pull it farther and farther out. And the more that I pull it the lighter it gets and that's what I want to happen. You can even go back in and add just a little more color up here to darken the closest part uh, of the petal to the center there. We want this upper area to be the darkest. And that's it. Little by little, this is going to blend out on its own. But down here we want it to be lighter and up here we want it to be darker. Um, and I'm going to do all of... Um, the petals in this color that I want first, and then I'll switch to another color. And so the process is the same each time. So I did this nice big petal here. Um, let's see, I'm gonna do this one up here next. So you just fill in with water. And then I start to apply my color closest to the center of the petal. And then I pull that color out with my paintbrush and I just stay within the lines. And then you can darken the center if you want. Let's see, I'll do this petal next. Um, and really, it, you don't have to do the exact same petals that I'm doing. You can switch it up. Really, I just, when I made my original, I just kind of alternated. So maybe next I'll do this one here.
And so you're gonna get a little variation within each petal um, as the water dries and the paint, the pigment moves and blends out. And I'm gonna continue working with the same color and I'm gonna do the second rose, um, just cause it's easier than alternating back and forth between colors. So again, I'm just gonna pick and choose which petals to do. There's no right or wrong. With every petal that you do, it's always the same few steps. You start with the water, then you add in color, and then you pull it towards the edge of the petal. It's also good to switch between flowers because it gives this, you know, it gave our first flower a chance for that water to dry slightly, um, which is good because anytime wet watercolor touches other wet watercolor, it's going to blend. Um, now all of these colors are going to play nicely together, so it doesn't, it's not a huge deal, uh, but it does make things a little easier. All right, now um, with the second layer, I'm gonna go through with my true violet here. I'm gonna pull this out just because it mixed a little bit.
And then I'm going to go back to my first flower and then um, I'm going to fill in the rest of the petals, but I'm not going to fill in the edges of the petals. So there are some small lines here where those are the petal edges. I'm not going to do that. It's really just the exact same process with a new color. If your water gets a little bit tinted, don't stress about that because we are working pretty much in the same color palette right now. So we're just treating each and every petal individually here, just adding color and letting it blend out.
If some of your areas touch and bleed together, um, also I would not stress about that too much either. That's kind of the beauty of watercolor and this is a really um, free flower. Um, moving and blending is really what makes this look pretty. So let your art determine what it wants to be. When you're working with watercolor, think of it as a collaborative effort. Um, watercolor is a very movie and flowy medium. And so sometimes it's going to tell you what it wants and it's not going to want the same things that you think um, look best. Sometimes it's going to tell you where it wants to go and that's okay. While these are still wet, I'm just adding in a little, a little more of that color. All right, so that first flower is completely painted in and I just alternated. Um, and now I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna alternate um, and add this second color down here. So with each step here, you're just adding this water and then tapping in your color and allowing that to blend out.
And you'll see um, each petal ends up being a little different just depending on how much water you use, how much pigment you add in. And that's kind of the fun of this is it really just creates this variation in all the petals. That is really beautiful. Once you have all your flowers, um, all your petals painted in, um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create um, a dark uh, blue violet. And it can really be um, any tone that you like. We want this just to be nice and deep. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start doing those little shadows on the petals. So those little snippets at the end that we left white, we're going to come back through and just fill that in with some deep blue violet. And I'm going to start up here on my top flower since most of this is fairly dry. This is one I'm not going to encourage to blend. So I'm doing wet on dry paper here. I'm also going to do my center in this nice deep dark color as well.
And I am not too worried about everything being perfect um, when I am doing this, these edges, because we're going to come back through and we're going to add some gold and that's going to be a really nice effect on there. All right, I'm going to let these flowers dry and go on to move to other areas here. So I'm going to get out my green and I am going to get out my yellow. And remember, if your yellow is nice and bright, just add a pinch, just the tiniest pinch of purple. The uh, thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to come through and I'm going to add yellow to all of my other flower petals. So I'm just going to give it this coat of yellow. I'm going to let that dry before I add um, my variation in there. Um, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work on some of these greens. So I've got this nice bright green and I do, um, I want to change this just a little bit. Now across from the color wheel from green is red, our red shade. So I'm going to add just a pinch of this magenta and it's really going to brown up this green. Actually, just the tiniest pinch, turn that way brown, just to show you what it did. Let's see. So I'm going to add quite a bit more of that green pigment in there. Let's see what we come up with. Ooh, that's much better. All right. So I just wanted it to be more of a, a real botanical color. And I'm just going to apply this wet to dry on these leaves. These are my rose leaves here. Right now we're pretty much just filling in color, wet to dry, and then what I'm going to go back and do is once I fill in that whole shape with a nice consistent color there, I'm going to come back through and I'm going to add some pigment on my brush and I'm just going to add some dots around this center line that comes down. And because the dots are being applied on too wet, those will move out a little bit. So I'm going to start with my rose leaves. So again, fill in my leaf. Come back through and I'm adding dots around this center line. I forgot a whole petal over here. There we go. Sorry about that. All right, now I'm going to add some of this pigment to my 
paintbrush, but I'm going to offload it so that it's not drippy, drippy wet. Um, because now I am going to come through and I'm going to add the green on these stems up here and pull my stem down. Now I am not going to um, do these stems or the flowers on these, um, I don't know what you call that. Um, uh, oh my gosh, like ferny like um, greenery here. I'm only going to do that for my flowers. I might even come back through and add a few more dots of this green around the center line just to really darken that area up. And I'm not too worried about whether those blend out completely. Those were a little bit dry um, because there are splotches and all kinds of stuff on leaves. So I'm not too worried about that. All right, now I'm going to add some shading on just a few of these, excuse me, a few of these petals. Um, so I've got my yellow here. Um, across from yellow on the color wheel is purple. So I'm just going to add a pinch, just a pinch this time of purple. And it's going to darken up this yellow just a little bit. I don't need this to be brown as much as I just need this to be a little bit different. And so right here we've got a leaf that folds over. And so I'm going to come back through with that darker color. Um, and again, it doesn't have to be brown. It just needs to, you know, we're adding a second layer of pigment. So that's going to darken it. And so on like every other leaf here, I'm just going to add in some variation of color. So they're not all the same. So I'm adding that second layer. And while that's wet, that second layer on just some of the petals, while that second layer on, let's say about half the petals is wet, I can come through and just add dots of color um, for more saturation at the bottoms of those petals. And that will blend out a little bit. But it blends out on its own. And then same thing up here. I'm going to add that second layer of color on just some of these folds. Like every other flower petal maybe. And then come back through and tap in some more pigment. And that's how we get that variation in the petals. All 
All right, we're gonna let this watercolor dry um, fairly well. And what I'm gonna do at this point is I'm gonna get my uh, acrylic ink out in gold. So if you don't have the acrylic ink and you're using watercolor, um, go ahead and get that ready. Um, if you don't want to use watercolor for this and you've got the acrylic, just thin it down. Um, you don't want to thin it so much that it's transparent, though. Um, and this is the part if you're using, you know, you can use a Sharpie for this. You can really use anything. We're going to get start getting some gold on this page. I'm just going to shake this up real good because it's been sitting. All right, so this, as I mentioned, I'm using acrylic ink. All right, and for this, I'm going to use a nice thin um, brush. So get your, your finest brush that you have. And the first thing I'm going to do with this is I'm going to go over these plant lines here, right over my tracer line, right over these stems, right down the center with, and this is just gold acrylic. Acrylic ink really is just gold acrylic paint. So it's going to behave like acrylic paint. And I'm going to paint in all of these plant leaves. I'm going to do this for each one of these stems. And you should find that if you're using acrylic ink, or acrylic paint that it covers those tracer lines really well. I got a little glob in there. <sighs> Globs are no fun. Let's see. And all the while we're doing this, our watercolor is drying, which is going to be helpful when we go to add that final finishing touch with our gold. I'm just moving from one plant to another. 
doing these little small gold leaves. And you have permission to change any of these leaf shapes, um, you know, make it work for what you're doing. Sometimes when you use a tracer, it just lines up funny or anything like that. Don't be afraid to rotate as you work. Make it easy on yourself. There's no awards for the most difficult angle painting.
this is really pretty. When this ends up drying, this is just a nice effect to have that bright gold popping out through the background. Um, and that's something I know did not show well on my sample because it's just not the same um, when it's scanned as it is in person. In person, you get all those pretty metallic reflections. And once you scan that and put it on a computer, you just don't see it the same way. But I love how all this gold just reflects and adds just that bit of glitter and shine that your eye picks up. All right, now this last part here is one of my absolute favorite parts. Let me clean up my watercolor just a little bit here. I like to scoop up and save as much as I can of this. Which is probably kind of silly. All right, so the next thing you're going to want to do, if you haven't already, you're going to want to add your gold to your fine liner um, applicator bottle. And we're not going to add any water to this. We're going to use it as is. And this is a step, again, if you don't have an applicator bottle, you can use a Sharpie. You can use a gel pen. Um, you can use paint and a teeny tiny paintbrush. Um, but what we're going to do is we're just going to outline um, all of the parts of the flowers. And... Um, you really can go crazy with this if you want to, but this is one of my favorite parts. So I'm just going to start here on this flower, and I'm just going to start outlining. Let me lift this up closer. Um, be strategic about it. So if you have any of those white areas showing through where your petals are meeting, cover those up. And just little by little, we are gonna outline our roses. as you do this it is okay to stop and start don't feel like you have to have complete perfect lines this is really pretty too if you um kind of use this fine liner as in a sketchy way now i've done this one in more of a you know just an outlining way 
um, that I've outlined with more sketchy free form lines. And that's fun too. What I like about using these applicator bottles is you can hide a lot um, by doing this. You can apply it as thin or as thick as you want to. Right now I'm just doing my balloons. My big rose balloons. And I'm going around the petals. Um, I'm not going to go around that center. If you did that, um, it's not a big deal. But I'm going to add some gold in two different ways up there. As you use this fine liner and you're covering up all those little marks from your tracer, you'll see it really starts to come together. I've completely gone around all of the edges of my roses. Now I'm going to go around the edges of my yellow flowers.
And then we're going to do our stems and rose leaves. We're not going to do these uh, gold ferny flower thingies in the back. But I am on one side of my rose leaf or rose stem. I'm going to add some gold. Um, be strategic about it. If you can see your drawing line, go right over the top of that drawing line. Hide that. And then up here, I've got some stems that need some gold up here at the bottom. And then we do our rose stems. So I pretty much am just going to do a line down the center of the rose uh, leaf, and then I do the outline. So right down the center, and then I do the outline. All right, and in the center of these flowers, again, I'm going to get a small, thin paintbrush. I'm going to get some of my uh, gold liquid paint here, my gold fluid um, acrylic ink. Small paintbrush, and in those center areas, I'm just going to add some dots. I will lift this up close to the camera here in just a second. So the first step is with this acrylic ink. And I just add a layer of kind of like dots or lines and I do that in the the center of that bloom there where the flowers have stamens and pistils um, and then I give that a moment to dry and then I can come back through and I'm going to add some more with uh, the gold paint in the bottle and I don't even pay attention to where those first ones are. I just randomly, you know, I'm not overthinking. Just move quickly and add dots, little dashes. And that is it, my friends. That is all the steps to make your gilded roses. Um, when you're finished, uh, you can look over this. And if you've got um, any areas where you need to do touch up, um, if you can see, um, you know, here in these ferny layers, if you can see any of your tracer line, um, you can just add a little more paint over the top of that. Um, if you've got a tracer line up here, just go over it again with the. Um, applicator bottle, the paint with the applicator bottle, however you want to uh, make yours, you know, perfect and finished and pop. Um, I might add a little, some little lines in here for, what are those seeds, stamens? I don't know, whatever parts of the flower those are, you can add those in. Any little fun finishing touches you want to do. And, um, at this point, I just want to say thank you so much for joining me for Gilded Roses. Um, I absolutely love watercolor, and when I use it, I love to use it in ways where it moves and blends and kind of does its own thing. I'll show you both versions. They're actually pretty similar. This one just has more pink, where this one is more purple um, and blue-violet. 
um, but both I really like. Uh, I cannot wait to see your version. So if you created with me today, I hope you will consider uh, sharing with me. You can do so by tagging me at Painted Cicada. Um, or you can join uh, my free Art and Share group on Facebook. It's called the Painted Cicadas Art and Share. You can look that up in the search option on Facebook, or um, you've got the address there that you can type into the address bar. Um, it's pretty much just facebook.com slash groups slash Painted Cicada group. Um, and uh, if you enjoyed painting with me, and I hope you did, uh, because I enjoyed painting with you, um, I'd like to tell you about my supporter membership. Um, supporters get everything that I do included uh, for only $4.99 a month. I typically have four to six paint lessons in a variety of medium. I use acrylic. I use watercolor. I use alcohol ink. Um, I do dot mandalas. I do a little bit of everything. So if you're like me and you can't pick a lane, um, it would be a really fun option for you. And it's only $4.99. Um, there's no commitment. You can stop anytime. Um, for more information, you can go to the address up here on the screen. Um, or you can find information on my Facebook page as well. But I'd just like to say thank you again for joining me for Gilded Roses. I cannot wait to see your version. Stay creative, art friends.